I really like the peptide uh, GHK-CU. Um, so GHK is the, um, the uh, peptides, and then CU stands for copper. So there's a version with copper and a version without copper. The version with copper is usually slightly expensive, um, but that's the version that's naturally found in the body. So uh, GHK-CU, you could kind of call it the anti-aging peptide. I don't think that would be unfair to say. Um, but the main reason why people usually use it is for the skin. So I, when I say anti-aging, it's because it has been shown to prevent DNA damage, at least to some degree. Um, it's also been shown that as you get, the older you get, the less and less of this peptide you naturally have in your blood. And when that's the case with something, like it's the case also of DHEA and, and various other hormones, we often say, huh, maybe the lack of that as you get older is part of the aging process. Um, and so, yeah, the, the GHKCU is uh, related to aging, I would say. But the main reason most people use it is for the aging of the skin. So this is a really, really simple one. You can either uh, buy GHKCU, just the peptide. It's a blue powder because of the CU part of it. Copper looks blue when it's um, in that uh, powdered supplement form. And you can stir it into whatever you normally use. So if you use a face toner, moisturizer, I don't know, all these things that you ladies use. I know I always say to my <laughs> wife, you know, would you like me to put some GHK copper in one of your bottles and she'll just give me, you know, something and I'll put it in there. So it's a way of upgrading any kind of um, healthy cosmetic product that you already like. Or there are different cosmetic products out there that contain it. Um, and in fact, hopefully we are, we're not close to it yet, but maybe at some point we are planning to bring one of those to market. So GHK is one of the few peptides um, that is primarily used transdermally. Uh, it is also sold as an injectable. I tried injecting a tiny bit of it once and really didn't like it. I don't know why it was. My body had a no thank you reaction to it. Uh, I was going to say, what was your reaction? Uh, just uh, feeling slightly poisoned, like slightly, I don't know, just weird. I can't remember well, to be honest, but it was like, a, it was an immune system reaction. It was not an obvious one, like hives or something like that. It was more like a neurological one. Uh, but it was a very distinct kind of, you know, yuck kind of uh, thing. So, yeah, you could say, oh, well, placebo effect. But it was bad enough that I didn't want to try it again. Now, the good thing is I don't have to because <laughs> it's one of the only peptides that's actually, you know, just as well absorbed through the skin as it is that way. So... Um, why is it well absorbed through the skin? I have not found really good evidence for that. The size of the molecule is not particularly small um, compared to other uh, peptides, so I don't see that that's the issue. But for whatever reason, it just is well absorbed into the skin. And so a lot of people uh, feel really good about how it makes their skin feel smoother and glow and all the rest of it. I'll be honest, because I'm a man, I've not been very consistent using it. Um, I, I was like a year ago or something, but I haven't used it for a while. So I can't say, I mean, I'm 42. I think I'm not too wrinkled or whatever, but I don't know how much of that is down to GHK really. Um, I'll have to be honest, but I'll tell you, it always makes your skin feel good. You know, my wife says exactly the same thing. Uh, she loves it. She is not interested in most of the things I recommend to her, but she likes this one. Uh, because she says it you know makes her skin brighter and, and smoother and, and and all the rest of it so um yeah i uh, and as i said i won't go into it in this video because these are meant to be short bite-sized chunks but um there's a whole book about ghk copper and its benefits that we can give a link to in the description here that goes through you know chapter by chapter for hormones for stress for uh, DNA for you know different organ systems like it, it it has massive benefits for every system of the body. I'll give you a crazy theory if you want a crazy theory. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so some of the like ancient aristocrats had this, and this is a crazy theory. It's also a bit of a gross theory. So if you um, are squeamish, then uh, stop watching now. Uh, like skip ahead for uh, for a minute, but. Uh, this idea of bathing in blood, right? 
there was Countess Bathory um, from uh, you know European aristocracy, but there's actually been this thing throughout the world, right? The Aztecs loved to do it; they would be sacrificing thousands of people sometimes. And this has actually been in almost every culture throughout the world: this idea of human sacrifice, eating other humans, which is another conversation, and ba ba bathing in their blood. And that's terrible, obviously. But I wonder if one of the... And the interesting thing about the bathing thing, it was often done more by women to stay youthful. That's the key thing. So the eating thing was more by men to like take on the strength of their you know, opponents or whatever. But the bathing was more considered to be a thing that promoted beauty. And I wonder if one of the components in the blood was the GHKCU. And the reason being because it's one of the only things one of the only peptides that's absorbed through the skin and it's a peptide that is made that keeps you younger dna wise to some degree and it makes you look younger so i was like hmm maybe maybe you know and so elwin are you encouraging no what i'm saying is <laughs> if you've ever been tempted to do that you don't have to anymore <laughs> all you need to do is get some lovely copper peptide which is very cheap and easy to synthesize um <laughs> And don't bathe in any blood. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about the different forms. There's the, um, you know, a, a skin application, but the injectable. Is there anything else or are those two the main ones? I've not, have I seen an intranasal? I might have done, but I wouldn't. Um, personally, I definitely wouldn't do an intranasal. Um, I have not seen a digestive one. And I think probably there could be one, but no one's bothered because of the skin. Because the easiest way to absorb anything pretty much is through the skin, right? It's the least troublesome usually. The only problem is it often doesn't work very well. But when it does, like with this, I mean, it's definitely preferable. And then would there be, I mean, with skin application, I suppose, uh, certain recommended doses or what would be, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. The one reason why you wouldn't want to have too much GHKCU that I know of is if you don't want too much copper, because obviously it does contain copper. Copper is something I talked about before. I did a different video where I talked about how copper balances with iron and zinc and molybdenum and how you don't want to overdo any of those too much because it will, down, it will reduce the others. It will cause your body to excrete the others. So um, if you eat like a, and have eaten for a long time like a high plant, in no animal food diet that's the type of diet you're most likely to end up with excessive copper or conversely if you eat organ meat that's the only animal food that has a lot of copper generally um and then you know you have low zinc and iron compared to copper usually if you're on that kind of diet otherwise if you're on the more the opposite diet if you eat quite a lot of animal food not a huge amount of um uh, uh, plant food then you'd be very unlikely to have an excess of copper and again unless you had a lot of organ meat so that's kind of an indication obviously it's always better to test right and copper is a good thing to test for every now and then at least because excessive amounts of it really are dangerous and not a good thing have i seen any evidence that just taking ghkcu can cause a toxic level of copper i have not um and again, uh, the book I recommended earlier, which goes in detail about that, has a whole chapter on that, exploring that issue. Um, however, if you already know you're copper toxic, which some people do or suspect that you are, then I would take it easy with GHKCU. Other than that, because a lot of people actually are deficient in copper, most people don't eat a, you know, exclusively plant-based diet. Um, that's uh, not that common. So most people actually do have a lack of copper. Uh, I would say having, again, it's kind of the limit of affordability, you know? So often GHK is cheaper than uh, other popular peptides like TB4 or TA1 per milligram. So you often get like, you know, 50 or even 100 milligrams for $100, something like that. Um, so I would say probably if you're like the least you would do would be 50 milligrams um, divided over two months you might go as far as doing 100 milligram in just a month. Wonderful. And then, you know, besides the safety concern of if somebody is too, has too high of copper, would there be anything else that people would need to look for? Not that I know for the transdermal route, which is the only route that I use and would have anyone else use. Fantastic. Thank you, Ellen. So, yes, I can see the wrinkles fading now. <laughs> <laughs>
I think a lot of models do use it. Yeah, yeah, I've se I've seen it out there a little bit. So no, it's great great to have the education on it for sure. And because then it also goes to then you know really looking at the label on those products and making sure you know what you're putting on. It's again enough of a solution where you're getting it, but also making sure that there's not anything else toxic in that um, cream or anything else that you're putting on transdermally. So you're not you know giving yourself something great, but then also potentially you know toxifying yourself even more yes and that's why you know my first recommendation is if you've already found a skin product that you know like and trust and hasn't got any crap in it's very easy to just order pure ghk and add it to that but yeah i know a lot of people it's very actually hard to find a skincare product that isn't full of crap so i would like to get something on the market at some point which has only goodness with ghk added that would be nice